Hi, I'm Anthony Mangano, and today, today on City of Churches, we're going to discover something very unusual about the clock here at St. Matthias Church, and why the inside of this church in Queens, it looks a heck of a lot like St. Joseph's Co-Cathedral in Brooklyn. Hi, I'm Anthony Mangano, and welcome back to a new episode of City of Churches. Today, today we're in Ridgewood, Queens. Did you know that Ridgewood actually sits on the border between Brooklyn and Queens? And about 50 years ago, this neighborhood was actually part of Bushwick, Brooklyn. Now that was due to old diagonal boundaries set down in 1769. Now it wasn't until 1978 that Ridgewood got an official Queens zip code designation. Now, in the 1880s, there was a local baseball team, and they called themselves the Brooklyn Bridegrooms. Now they played here every Sunday. They changed the name of that team to the one and only Brooklyn Dodgers. That's right, the Brooklyn Dodgers, who today, of course, are known as the Los Angeles Dodgers. Now, at the beginning of the 20th century, Ridgewood was primarily made up of farms, small family businesses, and a growing number of factories. The two largest industries in the area were breweries and knitting mills. The Platts Brothers Paints has been a neighborhood fixture for over a hundred years here. A hundred years! The facade of the Ridgewood Theater, well that was built in 1916 and it was designated a historic landmark in 2010. Now it no longer functions as a movie theater because it was recently gutted but the facade is still there showing its beauty. And Ridgewood had a few celebrity residents over the years. Here's a favorite of mine. You dirty rat. The one and only actor James Cagney lived right here. As did old time vaudeville entertainer Gus Van of the song and dance team Van and Shank. And New York Yankees public address announcer Bob Shepard was a longtime resident, as was the original drummer for the Ramones, Tommy Ramone, who lived here until he died. And at the crossroads of Myrtle and Cypress Avenues is the Ridgewood Remembrance. Here we are at the Ridgewood Remembrance Memorial here. And this was dedicated in 1923 by the local residents here for the neighbors who gave their life during World War I. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of commotion going on here because we're shooting around Memorial Day. You see the statue has a uh, sailor, a soldier, and a pilot on it. We're gonna take a little tour around it so you can see. Now there's a sailor here. Come on, follow me. We're, we're gonna look at this, it's amazing here. Over here we have a pilot, and over here we have a soldier. And on this list, there's a list here of all these soldiers, people who died, gave their lives in World War I. And it's a tribute to all the men and women who gave their lives throughout the course of history of the United States of America. It's a really nice tribute to all those people who gave their lives. Not just in World War I, all the wars we had. God rest their souls. Well, now it's time for our final stop on our tour. And we're gonna head over to the clock tower at St. Matthias Church. There's a lot of good stuff in there, so come on. Hi, and welcome back to City of Churches. Thanks for coming back. Today, today we're at St. Matthias Church here in Ridgewood, Queens. 
with Pastor Monsignor Peter Zenzian. Hello, Father. How are you doing, Mike? Great, great to have you on the show here. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's such a beautiful church. Uh, it, it, it is amazing. It, I'm, I'm looking up at it, I'm like in amazement. It reminds me of, of St. Joe's. Well, it should because Mr. Berlinbach is the same architect. That, that's amazing. That's why it caught my eye. And because we, we did an episode, which we're going to finish on that, uh, that from the restoration. Oh. which I've been in there since it's restored and it's, it is utterly amazing. And I could see the similarities here. There's a lot that's the same. Why was it named after St. Matthias? Well, uh, actually in Trier, in Germany, there's a basilica in honor of St. Matthias. Uh, apparently, uh, Helena, the, the mother of Constantine the Great, mm -hmm. took the relics from uh, Jerusalem to Rome and part of them remained at Saint, uh, Saint San Maria Maggiore in the main altar and the rest went up to Trier to the cathedral. Uh, cathedral Basilica. So uh, a lot of German people have a devotion to St. Matthias uh, because uh, we have the founders of the past really were G German people. This is one, a very German area and I remember as a youngster coming down here from, uh, from Queens to, in Maspeth to this part of Queens for, for shopping with my, with my folks. Even though we're Polish, we, it was a great uh, uh, German uh, um, butcher shops and, and, and bakeries, all kinds of great stuff yeah, here. You see, most people won't know because my last name's Mangano, what I was talking about, but my grandmother was Polish German. So I have a lot of customs that I still relate to, not just the Italian side, but, but I'm also Polish German. Um, when was it founded here? Well, it, uh, Bishop McDonald decided in 1908 there should be a parish in this neighborhood and the buildings start to go up. So the original school, there was a school now, it was really a church school kind of building. The lower church was begun first. And uh, the, the upper church was dedicated, the corn, had a cornerstone dedicated in 24. So by 26 to two years through this beautiful place. But see, this is the whole point of a church like this, that every place you look, you have a catechism lesson. Mm -hmm. That's why I tell the children, you walk into church, look up at the ceiling, look at the windows. Look at the different uh, pieces of, of, of artwork. You've learned something about our faith every place you look. You can't help but learn something new. The detail. I can't imagine. I've seen new stained glass. Mm -hmm. It's not even close no, it's to what the these the men and women gone. did. The art is gone, sadly. And, and it needs to be preserved. It, it needs to be preserved for, for future generations so that people such as myself and, and younger and, and new, new people coming into our faith after they're baptized, can come in as they get older, they can love, and, and like you said, you know, they can look at a book, and, and I hate to say it, the, the art of reading is not as it used to be. Everything is like this. But when you look up and you see, you know, you go, wow, there's a story there. Yeah, you're not tweeting here. You're actually no, going into the life of the saints and life of our Lord and our Blessed Mother. It's been renovated three times. Uh -huh. The last, last was in the 80s and it was repainted, the color was made a little bit lighter. Earlier on, there was a, a tradition to use darker colors in churches, but with the problem of lighting and, and such, uh, more reflective paint was used so that you could see more easily what was going on and just brighten the whole place up and made it even seem bigger. Who, what was the architect's name of this? It was uh, uh, Francis J. Berlinbach. Francis J. Berlinbach? Yeah, so we, we have our own little uh, sheet on the parish uh, church here because we are, part of a set of churches in this historical district that have site visits and we have to follow certain rules and anything that we do on the property. And Berlinbach was very well known in this area. He did St. Aloysius as well. He did was a sacrament in Cypress Hills. Wow. So he was, he was well known in the, in, in the beginning of the 20th century as a good architect who had style and class and will give you a, a building truly that was worthy of honoring God. Well, so far I've seen two of his churches and I can definitely agree with that because they're, they're absolutely breathtaking. Here in St. Joe's, I mean, and this reminded me of it. They're just so similar and he, he had a, a unique design to it and I, he, it does honor God. There, there's no two ways about it. And you walk in here, you know you're honoring God. You, right. you're, you're, you're getting a, a history lesson in the Bible here. Yeah. Well, so it used to, uh, every church is a foyer to heaven. Yeah, you sure. step off the street, you're in the foyer to heaven. And so you want to make it all the way, so we hope. Yeah, I would, I would, yeah. <laughs> we hope. How old is this church? Well, it was finished in 24, so we're getting on towards 100 years of this building. But the lower church was, we began earlier. That's, you know, close to 100 years old oh, wow. already. So we're, we're around for a good bit of time. What is the 
style of the architecture here? Well, it's, it's, it's a Renaissance, it's chiefly Renaissance design. It has some modern kind of elements too, but also has some Baroque elements. There are a lot of uh, um, gildings here and little extra tidbits that when you look into the art, you say, oh goodness, this is a little bit more, a little bit extra. Yeah, I could see, yeah, it, 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 the way it swoops this way and then goes in and then pops the pit. Yeah, there, there's a lot, there's, there's a lot, there's, there's, there's a lot of detail. Oh, he, yeah. This man, he, he knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing. He put great he detail in school. I noticed that the, the clock outside, what can you tell us about that? Well, that, that, that clock is from the beginning. It's, uh, it's truly uh, special and uh, it, we have the bells ringing from 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. to 10 p.m. every quarter hour. And during the night on the hour, it just, it tolls. And uh, it's all mechanical. And uh, it's, it's, it, I've never seen anything like it. You know, oh, not, wow. that I, not that the others don't exist, but this is truly something that has, that our, our wonderful people on staff take good care of. They had, last year with the terrible cold, the wires actually popped. So all the old, because the fruit, it was so cold, but this year, even though it was so, it was so cold, the new wiring, because it's all mechanical. It's okay. not, it's not, it's, there's no electronics, there was no chip, so you couldn't uh, have an LED or an LCD. Oh, yeah. So it's all, all, all hard, literally hard wired, truly hard wired. Wow. So it's, it's, quite, it's quite an instrument. Looking up at the, the pipe organ, um, how many number of pipe organs here uh, have been here over the years. Is that the original? Oh, or? no, this is actually the third. This came Three. in. Three? Yeah, yeah. Oh. This is uh, the Casavant Frère. They, they put, put this in. There was a piece of the Odell on the original uh, two. It's uh, still uh, in the back there. There are pieces and elements that were, were preserved, so you didn't have to replace everything. How many people could be seated here? Well, the upper church can hold 950. But we squeeze in much more than that for uh, different holy days and, 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 and feast days. Downstairs, we can do 850. Oh, wow, that, that's pretty big. Oh, it is. How many different nationalities are in this church oh, now? Wow. I mean, how many masses kind? <laughs> well, we use, we, have, we use four languages on the weekend. Four. English, German, Polish, and Spanish. Wow. This is the last parish in the whole diocese of Brooklyn where there's a mass in German. I do it. I practiced a little bit uh, again, but, uh, but we have a Hispanic community here for about a quarter century, Polish about 20 years. We have had, we had Italian, I remember doing the Italian Mass a few times when I was an Italian priest in Middle Village, when the priest here was, was away or, or sick. So we have four language, five languages that are in play that on, on a regular basis. Now. But I think we're actually the only parish church in all of New York City where there is a German Mass. I hope our viewers enjoy that because I, I find that fascinating right there alone. Well, this is, a, this is an explanation of our church's um, different uh, artistic works and how it's all laid out because we are part of the, the conservancy. The, um, the, the church here is on the tour that each year, uh, we're, because it's the, the National Register of Historic Places as of two, uh, 2012, and we're in the Ridgewood South Historic District of New York City. They can, they can find out about this on, on your website. website right? Which Irish would website. be just Google St. Matthias, and you won't you won't miss it. St. Well, Matthias way, Ridgewood. If there, I, I recommend that if if you have the time, I I have to tell you this is fascinating. Being in here and looking at everything, I think it would be truly truly worthwhile for you. You can see the fascinating things about St. Matthias. It, it just it, it it's utterly amazing, and I think I think you'd really enjoy yourself historically as as a Catholic to see what has gone on here and the beauty of this. I told you I'm a big stained glass guy. Do you have a favorite one? Well, actually, looking over your shoulder, looking at St. Matthias is right being there? chosen, yeah. Oh, wow. In the book of uh, the Acts of the Apostles, it tells us how between the Ascension and Pentecost, Matthias was chosen by Lot, as well as Joseph Barsabbas. Uh, there were two disciples of our Lord. They were there from the time of the baptism uh, of John, of our Lord, until uh, the Ascension and they had to fig fig figure out who to replace uh, Judas with. And by luck, they were chosen. So when you look up at that, and uh, you see our parish uh, patron there, you know, it's, it's, it's truly, you know, that, that's better than Disneyland or any video. Yes. You look and you, you see the blues, the purples, the greens, the reds, it, 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 it looks, it's like picture coming to life. It is, it is. 
and there's there so much going on. That's why we have these, these, these sheet. Is there? If you just look even at the little f the, the floor plan, all the things oh, wow. that go on here, all the different uh, the windows, all the different decals and such, and paintings. Uh, it, it's it's truly uh, truly amazing. I can see why this is a historical site because you could see. And, and, and Monsignor Wagner made sure he put these side altars over here as instruction for the children. And there's even a little girl wearing shoes that looks uh, on, the in the in the on the left side here, shoes like the children oh, wear okay. at the grammar school. Look, oh, little, wow. With little bobby socks. Oh, that's really, that's very cool. That's grace. That, this is so fascinating, you know, I, I, I mean, just that alone, I mean, all of It's those. just so much, and, and you keep on going, you keep on going. It's, a, it's not just one or two things. No, no, there's more. I could see that. So it's, like I said, it's a catechism class. You could come in here for years and still not see it all. But most of the apostles are here, and, and some, of the, some of the smaller saints. I'm, I'm ordained on the Feast of St. Blaise. We have St. Blaise even here. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, I, I, it's my, my own private devotion. You can start going through the list, but you know, the show has to finish at some point. So. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to add about, about the church? Uh, we have a priest from Romania doing uh, the Spanish work and helping me with the Italian. So uh, we have all kinds of things possible here, and the neighborhood is, is constantly refreshing itself. And we're just hoping that it stays interesting, uh, properly ethnic and Catholic, and something that truly uh, is, a, is a place to praise God. What does the building represent to your parishioners? I know what it represents to you, but what about your parishioners? <clears throat> well, it's, it's home. It's home. Yeah, people come here and they feel comfortable. That's the thing, that you should feel comfortable in your parish church. I guess it's a foyer to heaven, but we all want to get to heaven. That's our eternal home. But we've, we're here in the meantime, getting ourselves nourished, mm -hmm. spiritually uh, and physically. We receive our Lord's body and blood. We hear the word of God read, we hear it explained to us, and we do it as a family. We do it as, as a group of people who's on the same pilgrimage. I have a question for you. Sure. I found this fa fascinating to our viewers, and we all know it's a font, but I found it fascinating. This top oh, this closes? Is, oh yeah, that, that slides over, uh -huh. protects the, the water. Because in the old days, you would just bless the water once or every so often mm -hmm. and be used over and over again. So Monsignor, we, we, we were making references to the font. Can you explain it to our viewers? Because it's absolutely gorgeous. Well, well this is the original uh, uh, font of our church. It began in the baptistry in the back. Mm -hmm. But uh, years ago, with the liturgical changes, it moved forward so people could be more easily see it and was by our Blessed Mother for a while. Then about 15 years ago, when the decision was made to, to make a baptismal pool and to have the font here together, the plumbing was added to let the water come in, warmed, and to allow people to be at the Easter Vigil baptized in the, in the pool, or usually ch or children here, little ones, to be baptized at the font. The uh, old style cover. I found that fascinating. I never saw that before. Look at that. This is, this is to protect the water. And especially when we're waiting for the children to come to keep it warm too. So it depicts St. John the Baptist baptizing. Baptizing. Our Lord. Yeah. 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 So this is this really this is this again is old school. But it's got such wonderful detail in it that you can see the the the, 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 the hair coat, as it were, that uh, St. John the Baptist is using and uh, you know the the whole the, the hands, the fingers, the the feet, the, it's, it's all gorgeous. The detail is gorgeous. That caught my eye. Well, I was hoping it would. It really <laughs> did. Can you explain that to us? Well, that depicts uh, Father Wagner, then Monsignor Wagner, uh -huh. as the founding pastor of the parish, holding the model of the church given to, to God as, as his oh, gift. Oh, wow. That's the model of the church, yeah. yeah. So, and then some of the popular saints of the people of the time and some of the ordinary folks who have been in the neighborhood are depicted there. So this is the great gift of this parish that, that he put together. I noticed that we, we, we hit on this a couple of times. There's a lot of different little models of this church oh. in, in certain things I know there. And then you have a stained glass window there donated by the Schlachter brothers. Did I get it right? Schlachter, yeah. Hey, look at that. I got, yeah, it, right. got it right. The German in me came out. The okay. Schlachter brothers. And, uh, and there's a model of the church there too, yeah. right, right in the picture itself. Yeah. That to me is fascinating because I've, I've noticed that 
it's there, it's there, it's in different locations. Yeah, it's important for people to know what a gift this building is and what a special place it is. And so when you get this little reminders, oh, you know, I shouldn't take this for granted. No, no, no. And, and the fact that it's, it's in the story itself, you, you see it there. And you see that, that, and I find that amazing. No, it's just fantastic. It's fantastic. Well, look, when we come right back, I'm hit on this, the Martini's gonna show us some special artifacts. So we'll be right back, okay? Well, we're back, and I was mentioning about special artifacts, but you call them? Relics. Relics. So let's see what we've got here to show our viewers. Well, we have something very special here. In the larger part of this case, uh -huh. uh, we have uh, a new relic, but on the top is an original. We believe that's a piece of bone fragment from St. Matthias, from wow. the beginning of the church. And on, on May 14th, what we do now is when we have the feast day of St. Matthias, we have a special mass in all languages of the parish. I give a blessing with the relic, and for those who want to come forward and kiss it, they're allowed, they're allowed to come in, in line and kiss the relic as a sign of veneration for the parish's patron. The larger relic is, is, is quite new. That's a drop of blood from Pope John Paul II. Cardinal Gibish, who succeeded him in Krakow, uh, gave that to us out of his knowledge of our parish's devotion to uh, Pope John Paul II the Great. So this, this is a newer relic, and it's actually that blood flowed through his heart. So we have a bit of the heart of, of, of our new saint, our, 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 our former pope, who's here right in, in our parish church. The beginning of, our, of the church. Yeah. Wow. From the beginning to now. Wow. So we have, you know, we have a little picture of John Paul II trying to get a nice picture of Matthias for above, so we keep the balance. But we try to do, in October, on the anniversary of the election of John Paul II, we, we do the same thing. We have a special mass. People can kiss the relic of, of, the, of the saint. And even the, on the, kind, the day of the canonization last April, for Queens County, we celebrated here in five languages a devotion on Honoring John 23rd and John Paul II with Bishop Geppetto. Oh, wow. So that was neat. Father, I want to thank you so much. My pleasure, Anthony. For Always allowing welcome. us to come in here and, and to see this beautiful church, St. Matthias. Okay. And I, I know you have to leave, so I want to tell our viewers uh, he has to leave because he's got to serve Mass, which is a little more important at the moment. Okay. Father, thank okay. you God so bless. much. God Take bless care. you. Take okay? care. Bye bye. Well, that concludes today's episode of City of Churches, right here at St. Matthias Church in Ridgewood, Queens. I hope you found it fascinating, found some interesting things, because I sure did. This is an amazing church. It's got such magnificent things in here that I found fascinating that each week I always find something new and fascinating when I do this show at different churches. Now, if you'd like anything about this church or any information, you could look us up on netnewyork.net, follow us on Facebook or Twitter, if you'd like to recommend the church to us, please, you can write into us at 1712 10th Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11215. Until next time, as always, I'm Anthony Mangano. Thanks for watching, and God bless you.